So my expectation when we got on that coach is that most people would come back and say that had a real impact on me. I really enjoy it. I just really love the culture and the architecture and just the people because they're so nice. So it was kind of like a wish come true. I'm extremely enjoying it. I think there's never going to be a time when you're 17 working abroad in Mexico ever again. Like, you're not going to get that chance again. It's given me a once in a lifetime opportunity. I just can't explain it. It's just amazing to be out here. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. It is a big of a project, government-led project actually, under what's called the Turing Scheme. And the aim of this is to give opportunities to people who maybe don't get those opportunities. So actually travelling here, I've never gone abroad, never been on a plane or anything before. So it's just like, never done that, so it was quite scary. I am terrified of planes. I don't do well with hot weather. I don't do well in a place that speaks a different language to me. Basically any type of fear or anxiety you can think of, I probably have it. I suppose really that my concerns that I would have would be taking the students a long way from home for quite a long period of time. Um, I didn't know the media students, they hadn't met me, I hadn't met the translators, they hadn't met me, I knew all the hospitality and catering students. But really, it's, it's that kind of the wobble after a few days, and because you can't just put you on, we're not going to the Isle of Wight for the weekend. You know, you need to be really sure it's what it is, and it's, it has been challenging. But what has really impressed me is it, at ULOP and the, the translators. Of course, my hospitality and catering students, are by and large, I'm impressed with all of them. The cabin crew have just been amazing. I'm from Norway, so in Norway we have like, you can go on exchange here in second year, like whatever country you kind of want to. So you just sign up and choose the country and choose your school and place and just kind of go to the English and explore new like cultures. I wasn't expecting nothing, like anything. Just go there and have fun, translate something I haven't done before. So it was something nice to try, translate to people that don't speak Spanish. <laughs> that was something I wanted to try and I think I did a, a good job. I think so. I was expecting it to be quite difficult with obviously the language barrier and everything, but with the translators here, like it's made it so much more easier and not everyone here just speaks like, the Sp like Mexican Spanish. Like some people do speak a bit of English, so it wasn't the worst thing in the world and it makes you feel much more like comfortable trying to talk to people and you're not just cut off from everyone not talking. Uh, so you're getting in the morning, uh, breakfast chefs in and prep chefs, so you have someone doing like pancakes and fruit and stuff like that for breakfast and then you'll have me and the other chef called Luis on the other side doing all the hot food like um, chilaquiles which is obviously the nachos that we get here with the sauce, uh, normal breakfast stuff like eggs, bacon, literally not much different to what we do in England at one o'clock which I was surprised breakfast runs until one o'clock which really surprised me but yeah clean down at one o'clock everything from breakfast goes in the fridge everything for dinner comes out uh, switch over the team so two chefs go home two chefs come in and then everything from one o'clock till five o'clock is obviously getting ready for dinner the amount of chilies they used I've never seen so many chilies in my life like literally never they have pretty about 20 different chilies in the kitchen it's like you lot must have cast iron stomachs. <laughs> yeah, so I start at 9.30. So then we drive to the place that I work at. And usually by 10, 
I start to work, so I'll just look if someone needs help with something, like uh, more so with the plates, like, oh, can I move the plate? Oh, is everything okay? Do you need anything more? Or, um, oh yeah, setting up the tables. Um, when a client comes over, uh, asking them, oh, do you have a reservation? Or uh, those different kind of things. It's pretty much just an average day, but it's completely different to like back home. Like at back home I start about, normally I do like night shifts, maybe like a, not complete night shifts, but like a 6, 10, but here we're doing like a 3 to about 10. So it's more like sunny weather right through till the evening. It's such a beautiful place and such a beautiful atmosphere compared to like back home that I kind of like doing the 3 to 10. So it's me, uh, Jazz and two others and we go about three, half three and um, we start like at the start where it's like an entrance kind of way and we sit there and we stand there for majority of the shift because we're working as like front of house, hosts for the customers, clients, whatever you want to call it. Um, so far, all we've been really learning is the Spanish side of things. Um, so like the greetings like hola, buenas tardes, buenas bienvenidos, it's like stuff like that. And then we have carried on the waitresses and the people who work in the restaurant has like told us like what to do and like there's, they've helped us like set up tables uh, and just given us a really good tour. It's more like, um, like an introduction at the minute, it's not like full on, we're not really like talking to like the people when they're on the tables because we don't know complete Spanish yet, but yeah, pretty much it's just like a normal, normal shift, just like hosting. And and we do have a side. I have a girl called Fabi. She like helps me and Jazz like connect to the Spanish and like lets us do a few of the talking. And it's weird because there's a lot of um, English people who come through, like a lot of international people. So it's quite like easy. Cause a lot of people from that the USA. So we're like, ah, oh, you speak English. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> In the restaurant it's always a different day, there's nothing the same because they're always preparing something on a different day or it could be a busy day, it could be a, um, a very quiet day, it just depends and that's the thing with catering and hospitality, it will always depends on the actual day itself. But there, you've always got something to do which is amazing because it makes time go quick and also you're learning so, much, so many new things at the same time, it's unbelievable. They have a completely different way of running it, so they have an um, executive chef and a head chef, um, whereas in England you'll normally just have a head chef in a normal, re uh, normal restaurant uh, kitchen. Also, uh, especially in my restaurant, we've got four kitchens plus a pr uh, produce kitchen. Um, the four kitchen are preparation, um, a cold line, hot line and uh, the pass. So where all the finishing touches, all the sauces that need to go onto the dish. Um, whereas in a uh, English kitchen, it will be completely different. You'll have one kitchen, and it will be everything will be prep, uh, prepared in that kitchen, be made up in that kitchen, and everything will just be put onto the past for the chef on the past to um, completely make up the dish. Mostly at placement, we are kind of doing like grunt work, like making pico de gallo and guacamole, and um, not really, it's not really cooking as I would say, but I do get to watch them do it. So even if I can't do it myself, 
I do understand what's going on, kind of. Especially with when they are speaking to me in Spanish, if Daniel's not there, I can kind of understand what they're saying through context. So it's not as much cooking as I thought I would be doing, but I don't mind, like, because I don't want to make anything more difficult for them because they have an establishment to run and they run it well. And having somebody who doesn't know what they're doing kind of throws a spanner in the works. So I, I just want to be helping them in whatever ways they need me to help them. Tacos are not made from very hard, like, corn tortilla shells. They're made from soft, flat, warm tortillas that you put stuff into and then, and then eat, which actually makes it so much easier to eat. You know when you're eating, like, a hard one, it just goes everywhere? With that one, you've actually got a good grip on it and it doesn't break and you don't have to worry about wasting anything because it's just so much easier. And also, the Mexican food isn't just, like, stuff wrapped in tortillas. There's, like, soups and mole, and mole isn't just like the chocolatey one, there's different types of it. And it's just, it's just such a more rich culture than people think there is here. It's just so much better than I thought it was gonna be. I'm so grateful, especially since I went for a, a language scholarship at my college. And what I was gonna do with the money was travel to a Spanish speaking country, but I didn't get it. So I was a little bit upset and down about it. And then this opportunity came up and it was free, and it was just the perfect thing for me, I think. Oh, it's 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 life changing. It's life changing for everybody. It's life changing for me. If if I when I come back and I take some, bring some things back with me, um, has it changed my life? Absolutely, absolutely. It really did give us a good insight, all four of us really, uh, of the cabin and Google. It really helped us, and we did learn a lot as well. Just starting out on the plane, getting here, we did learn a lot. So obviously I work in the hospitality industry at home in England, so working here in a Mexican restaurant has been great as obviously in the future on flights I'm going to have to learn to deal with different language barriers, the same as I'm having to do here in the Mexican restaurant, so it's going to be a great um, practice for the future when there's different people on board with different languages, um, so it's a yeah, good practice. I was expecting quite a bit, you know, there's a lot of, diff there's, a, there's a big culture shock, like everything's different over here. Although I wasn't expecting it to be as religious, to be fair, it's like really religious over here, big cathedrals, and they have loads of historic stuff, like the big library that we went to the other day. So our expectation was they went in with an attitude to say, I'm going to give it a really good go and I'm going to find it hard and it's going to really challenge me but I'm going to give it a really good go. I think they have. I think they have. I think some have found it easier than others but I think on the whole the attitude of the students is what we were hoping to see that whilst this has really challenged them they've all stood up and thought I'm going to take this on. The students gain invaluable experience in Mexico, work experience in the Mexican catering industry, which I think they could not have in the UK. Thank you, Turing.